as we go forwards. So, um, um, yeah, just a little bit of introduction, if that's okay with everybody. Um, so, my name is Chris Booth. I work for IT Health. Um, most of you will probably be aware of us. We've been operating uh, in the NHS sector space now for nearly 30 years, and uh, we uh, we provide a wide range of solutions. One of those, which is uh, Fair Warning, and I'm going to be joined today by colleagues from Fair Warning. And they'll probably do their own introductions, Andy and Tyler. Um, just before I do that, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the question box, which you should see in your panel, and we'll deal with them at the end of the uh, end of the webinar. Uh, we will endeavour to keep to time, and everybody's busy, so we'll try and keep to time and uh, deal with those, and uh, go from there. So, um, without further ado, I'll uh, ado, sorry, I'll hand over to Andy, who's going to give us a little bit of an introduction um, around fair warning. Andy. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, th thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Andy Fife, as, as Chris mentioned, Regional Vice President for Fair Warning here in, in EMEA uh, and actually based out of the UK. Also joined by Tyler Carlson. Uh, I'll let Tyler do his own intro now. T Tyler, if you want to. Yes, Hi. hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon to you and uh, good morning here from uh, sunny uh, Tampa, Florida. Uh, I am based out of our headquarters uh, in the U.S., uh, hence my, my strange accent, but uh, I am the Director of Sales Engineering here uh, at Fair Warning, uh, and we really appreciate you all joining today. And so with that, we will go ahead and jump right into the content. So um, for those of you who aren't uh, as familiar with Fair Warning, uh, we want to give a little bit of a background, a little bit. Um, of kind of a, a who we are here uh, as as far as our, our scale, our experience, and, and kind of uh, the industry that we serve. Now, as far as uh, protecting patient privacy, uh, we've actually been doing this for 15 years now. So uh, we invented the, uh, the idea of uh, proactive patient privacy monitoring um, 15 years ago. Uh, and we've been doing it ever since, and we've been uh, obviously creating many different iterations, and uh, we've been uh, adapting to the latest threats in the industry since then. As far as our scale goes, um, in the U.S., where we're based, we are deployed, uh, and today it's actually about 40% um, of all of the U.S. health systems. That makes up, again, today about 9,000 facilities that we protect. And these range all the way from single hospitals uh, all the way up to the largest and most complex organizations in the entire country. And kind of a fun fact, uh, we actually protect uh, 273 million patients every single day on a proactive basis. As far as applications go, we support over 150 commercial applications, and in another kind of 200 uh, custom applications as well. Now, as far as some of our customers right in your own backyard, if you will, uh, you can see uh, really a snapshot of the different organizations that are using and getting value from Fair Warning today. So we do have uh, quite a presence in the UK and we do understand uh, that there's definitely some uh, intricacies and differences uh, for our customers in the UK and, and throughout Europe um, that are very different from our customers in the US. And so you'll hear Andy talk a little bit later about some of the different regulations that we map to uh, specifically for, for your domain. Um, but again, you can see here uh, many of the different customers that are using Fair Warning, again, right in your backyard. And then as far as the U.S. goes, uh, just to give some background on kind of where we got started, you'll see some of the more prominent organizations uh, throughout the United States that are using fair warning. Some of these logos may be familiar to you, maybe not, but um, I'll point out a couple. Uh, you look at an, uh, an Ascension Health um, in the U.S. deployed uh, all over the country, um, monitoring over a hundred thousand employees every single day. So uh, very large and complex deployment. You look at a UPMC that's monitoring um, over 40 applications 
within the fair warning um, software platform. Um, so many different complex deployments here in the States. Uh, and again, maybe some of these logos look familiar to you. Now I will pass it over to Andy here uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, healthcare delivery model that's specific uh, to your organizations uh, really in the UK. Thanks, Tyler. Um, and and the, key, the key point really that, that we've seen um, that our customers have, have really been addressing here, here in the UK um, and just generally across the market is, is with, with the increased digital transformation you know, of the, the NHS, uh, the increased volume of, of records being, being digitized, more systems um, obviously being, being digitized and processes in, in, in the health service. This, this then ultimately leads to and, and drives a, additional volumes of, of data which, which uh, a health organization has to manage, manage monitor and protect. And, and having visibility into all of the, the, the accesses of, of patient records across the, these multiple different systems is, is obviously extremely difficult. And to get a single point of glass uh, perspective and, and visibility in, into that, that activity, um, you know, to flag that, that abnormal, unwanted, suspicious, malicious activity on, on the patient record is, is, is difficult. Uh, so really without any, any level of automation to help address that is, is always going to be a challenge. I'm trying to move on to the next slide, Tyler. So what we've we've experienced in in the market here is is that um, you know healthcare is is no different to any other industry. Um, data is is certainly a, a crown jewel and, and an asset for, for that organisation. And and recent statistics, um, as, as you can see on on the screen here, from from different sources, um, that you know data breaches, um, you know whether caused maliciously. Um, or, or suspiciously or just accidentally by by you know users accessing data that perhaps they shouldn't uh, that they didn't know that they, they're uneducated um, in terms of what what they can and can't access within these these very sensitive clinical patient systems um, it's, it's really been able to to understand uh, and, and obtain a baseline of, of access uh, understand what is normal who should be accessing the data is it the typical care teams uh, is, is that correct? Is the level of access correct and in line with their, their peers? Um, you know, we, we've seen it across the, across Europe, certainly, uh, the consequences of not necessarily managing the, the access to, to that data. Harger Hospital, for, for example, in the Netherlands, uh, was, was just hit last year with, with nearly a, a half a million euro fine uh, due to um, you know, inappropriate access to, to a, a, a VIP patient's records. Um, and, and therefore, um, obviously, the, the information leaking out into the into the public domain. Um, so, re really, having that that true understanding uh, that the correct users are accessing the correct patient records, and um, this information is proactively being monitored um, through an automated mechanism across all of these different applications, is, is again is, is critical. Next slide, Tyler. Perfect. And so uh, many of you may be wondering, well, how does this all work and, and how is fair warning uh, doing uh, this type of monitoring and, and how are you really helping us with these threats that you're, you're talking about? And so on the slide here, you'll see uh, a little bit of an overview of the fair warning uh, software as a service platform. And we'll dive into more detail after this to show some specific use cases. And obviously we have a, an actual demonstration planned at the end, but from a very basic perspective, what fair warning is doing is we're taking all the access logs from your clinical application. So this can be your commercial EMRs, it can be custom uh, applications that store patient data. Um, it can also be cloud applications. So uh, Office 365, uh, you talk about SharePoint and OneDrive that may contain patient data that you may not even know about, uh, salesforce.com or business applications, all of these different applications within your organization, we take that data and we spin it all together into the fair warning platform uh, using Amazon Web Services for the UK. 
to keep that data right in your domain. And we use a patented process that's called identity intelligence. And what that does is it takes all these different applications, these disparate applications, and it spins the data together into a single pane of glass. So that way you can then, as you look at the right-hand side of the screen, you can perform real-time alerting, you can perform patient and employee investigations, run proactive behavioral analytics, you can look at deep dive forensic investigations across all of your applications in one platform. So it really makes it easy for you to see kind of the entire organization, the entire workflow of a user, or the entire path of a patient, all in one platform, all in a single view. And that's really the bread and butter uh, of fair warning. Now, what type of use cases do our customers find uh, valuable? Uh, well, snooping is one of the first ones. So that kind of low hanging fruit in the organization, uh, proactively monitoring for inappropriate access by employees, uh, maybe for the purpose of looking at coworkers records or other staff records, maybe looking at family member or household member records. Maybe they wanna look at their manager or their boss's records. All those different scenarios are covered by fair warning. Drug diversion is one that's emerging now as becoming more, um, unfortunately more common, but also more um, important for our customers to monitor. So being able to look at the movement of drugs or medications throughout the organization is really valuable for our customers. Monitoring VIPs is huge. So obviously we know that uh, many of your organizations are, are housing VIP patients at times, and we can proactively alert you to the fact that you have a VIP patient that you may not be aware of, and then also provide very specific monitoring to those VIP patients. We always look at modifying records. So individuals who are going in and they're editing or canceling or deleting information out of a record in an inappropriate manner. We can trend user behaviors against their peers to let you know who is deviating from peer group averages and who's deviating and performing activities in the records that are uh, anomalous or inappropriate. We have security scenarios uh, where we can uh, look for indications of compromised credentials or access by terminated users or maybe just users who are inactive or on leave or uh, just shouldn't be in the record at that point in time. We're always going to monitor for deceased patient access. Uh, deceased patients, from our experience, can be targets um, for uh, identity theft or record theft. And then lastly, and we'll talk a little bit more about this a little bit later, we use AI, uh, we use artificial intelligence machine learning to help predict risky behaviors across the organization. Now, as far as the fair warning platform goes holistically, we have some different really, really pillars here that are really important when we start talking about a proactive uh, monitoring program. And so obviously you need to be able to comply with confidence, comply with those regulations that Andy's gonna talk about here in a minute. You need to be able to protect your patient's privacy with both rules and awesome technology like artificial intelligence and machine learning. But what's probably most important, and the reason we have uh, the largest one being prevent, is you need to prevent violations within your organization. And that's what fair warning really does. When fair warning gets deployed, we really prevent violations from happening in the future. Uh, and that's really important within a, a healthcare setting. And Andy, I'll turn it over to you for this slide. Thanks, Tyler. So, so re really, we're, we're helping organisations uh, comply with confidence, um, have, have the ability to have a, a demonstrable, repeatable set of actions and processes really to give, give the organisation visibility in, into the, the activity that's taking place within their, their clinical um, systems and, and access to patient records. 
with, with regards to, to you know regulatory um, mappings and, and guides to try and and, and help organisations you know meet these these compliance requirements, uh, we, we've we've mapped uh, to, to HIPAA um, obviously from from our, our, our heritage out of the US um, and, and addressing we obviously you know one of the most um, heavily regulated uh, compliance regulations in in the market today. Uh, we've mapped it to best practice, you know, industry best practice guidelines around ISO 27001. Um, but also here, here in the UK, we, we, we've also mapped it to the, the, the DSPT um, and, and we can help organisations, um, you know, meet the, and provide the evidence uh, to, to assist with their, their, their assertions um around the, the the toolkit submission as well so so certainly trying to give you as much information um and best practice to to align and and help demonstrate this this uh, proactive um source of monitoring um within your within your organizations Over to you. all right and so uh, almost to the end here of our slides before we jump into the fun part and uh, take a look at the actual uh, demonstration. But what we really want to cover here is, you know, we've talked about complying with confidence and we've talked about preventing violations and we've talked about some of those use cases. But when we break it down, how are we doing it? Well, we look at rules for, for known behaviors, you know, with that 15 years of experience. And again, whether it's in the UK or in the US or anywhere for that matter, we know that in a healthcare setting, there's certain behaviors that we should all be looking for. Every healthcare organization should be looking for these specific behaviors because they're occurring. They're occurring every single day and we know exactly what to look for. So we're gonna set up those proactive rules to look for those easily identifiable behaviors that again, everyone should be looking for. Now, we also acknowledge that even with 15 years of experience, there's some behaviors that we don't necessarily know are occurring and some behaviors that are risky to an organization, but we may not have a rule that can just find that type of behavior. So what we've done is we've developed these complex AI algorithms that are best in class that really look for these impermissible accesses that maybe you didn't even know to look for. Maybe these are more subtle behaviors, subtle trends of user activity, like non-care team access, um, abnormal behaviors uh, regarding access to certain areas of the medical record that may contain data that's important to someone that we didn't even know was important to them. That's really our approach. It's two-pronged, it's rules for those behaviors that we should all be looking for, and it's AI for those behaviors that uh, maybe keep us up at night that we don't necessarily know about. And I think one one of the the key things that that I really wanted to point out to, to the, the the audience today um, is that um, although a lot of our customers you know choose to to run fair warning as as a platform, uh, themselves that they have their own information governance teams they have their own in, internal investigation security teams um, that this is is a, a platform that we can we can also run on on your behalf as a, as a customer so, so we provide managed privacy services um, so if if you don't have the the in-house expertise you don't have the the necessary bandwidth within your your teams to, to actually pick this up and, and run this um, you know, on, on your own behalf, then just to let you know that, that there is a, a, a team dedicated to, to running Fair Warning as a service at Fair Warning, uh, leveraging, you know, 15 years of, of experience uh, for a number of, of customers um, and, and certainly wanted to, wanted to just let, let the audience know uh, that this is certainly a capability that, that we're happy to run um, for our clients um, here in the UK is, is obviously well in, in the US. Uh, but certainly we've seen a significant success um, and that the, the feedback has been uh, very, very positive from, from the customers that, that have utilized this, this service. And awesome. I believe 
Tyler now is, is, is going to actually take us into a demonstration of, of the platform and take us through some of the key use cases that, that our customers have been utilizing the platform to address. Tyler. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. And bear with me for one second here, everyone, as I switch over. So we're going to jump into our live demonstration environment. And we'll make sure that we leave time at the end here uh, in order to answer questions and kind of give some Q&A. Because I know you probably already have some questions. But what you should be seeing on your screen here currently is the fair warning application. So this is what we've been talking about this whole time. This is the fair warning uh, software platform that you'll see here. Uh, what we're going to do today is, is run through kind of a general tour of the different modules that are contained within Fair Warning. Uh, I will show a couple of specific use cases that I think will be relevant for the audience that we have on today, uh, show a little bit of the kind of features and functionality as well. However, um, we could demo for three hours. So if you want to see more of a deep dive of the Fair Warning application, make sure you let us know because we're happy to get kind of an individual demonstration set up uh, for you and for your organization that dives even deeper uh, than what we'll be able to cover today just for the general audience. So keep in mind, always happy to do kind of an uh, individual personal demo. Now, where we're gonna begin here today in the application, it's, it's our landing page for when we log into Fair Warning. Uh, and this is our dashboard. And the dashboards can be used for, for many different purposes within Fair Warning. So I've got kind of a general dashboard pulled up here that gives me statistics on my program. So you can see that for this organization, we have the number of alerts that are triggering and the status of each of those alerts uh, based on that behavior that Fair Warning is flagging. Now, once we have an alert and fair warning, um, if we find it suspicious, we'll convert that alert into what we call an investigation. That way we're documenting that incident in the fair warning application. Uh, again, we're talking about compliance here. So documentation is key. And so for those investigations, we can see, well, how many investigations are we completing over time? And, and what's the status of those investigations? I can show other trends within the organization. So maybe how, how long is it taking us to, to get through alerts or how many alerts are we triggering over time? Now, a different dashboard that I wanna point out specifically, because I know uh, in today's day and age, obviously kind of a, one of the hot topics is, is COVID-19. And so with fair warning, we're always adapting to the latest threats within the industry. So very, very early on, we built out a COVID-19 monitoring dashboard for our customers. And we deployed this across our customer base so that our customers could see exactly who is accessing COVID patients. They can see what departments are accessing them, what individual users are accessing them. They can see, well, how many COVID patients do we have in a certain area? Uh, who is coming into contact with them? And so with fair warning, um, our customers are even identifying individuals that have found uh, ways to exploit these COVID patients. Um, so really giving you visibility into a certain type of patient population uh, is another valuable piece within the fair warning application. And I'll scroll through here uh, for you to see some of the different what we call widgets that are available uh, for COVID monitoring specifically. And so really you can see we, we have departments, we have users or employees, if you will. We have a widget that shows people who are maybe accessing deceased COVID patients. All these different scenarios that may be posing a risk to your organization, whether it's patient safety, whether it's employee safety, or whether it's those unwanted scenarios can all be pointed out and kind of viewed right here from a high level view on your COVID dashboard. Now, as far as your dashboards themselves go, Fair Warning makes it really easy for you to actually change these dashboards and customize them to your own liking. So I can select from a large library 
of pre-built widgets. Maybe I want some additional COVID widgets. Maybe I want uh, some widgets that point to other types of behaviors on my dashboard. Everything's pre-built and fair warning, and it makes it really easy for you to just drag and drop, plug and play right on your dashboard. Now, from our dashboards here, we're gonna shift gears a little bit and jump into kind of one of our first scenarios or one of our first use cases, if you will. And so we're gonna start, we're gonna start basic. Now, with fair warning, we give our customers the ability to visualize their data and have their data come back to them in one location. So maybe you have a, a patient complaint or a user investigation where you need to look into a user's activity or look into a patient record. And maybe this is across multiple sources. And so with fair warning, in order to get that data back to you, all we need to do is type in a date range and then type in either some user information or some patient information. And then I can execute this report, again, across all of the different systems that are coming into fair warning. So instead of jumping back and forth between multiple locations, instead of looking in my uh, my human resources system to get data on a particular user, everything's gonna come back to me right in fair warning. And I can view a user or a patient activity in chronological order across those systems. So I went, to I went ahead and typed in a patient name here, John Smithson, and I executed this report for John. And you can see that John has been accessed by a couple different users across a couple different sources here. Now, maybe you're someone who likes to actually visualize data instead of pouring through rows of data, or maybe you're used to looking at a spreadsheet of data, and maybe you'd rather see kind of a graphical representation of that data. Now, with fair warning, we have what's called insights. And these insights allow us to view user activity or patient activity from a visual perspective. So we can see that this patient record was updated 13 times. It was viewed four times, essentially allowing me to slice and dice the data that's below from a visual perspective uh, makes it a lot easier for kind of a, a normal person like myself uh, that's not a data scientist or someone who has these you know, deep skills in data analysis to actually be able to view user activity. Now, if you do wanna look at the actual kind of raw information uh, on the patient, we certainly can. Uh, and so I can see here uh, who's accessed John's record, uh, what part of my hospital organization uh, they're in. I can see I have a pediatrics user here uh, who is viewing the record of John. I can see information about John. Uh, I can see that in this case, John uh, is actually a surgery patient who was born in 1977. So right off the bat here, right in this particular report, we can already see that uh, we have a user who's accessing this record in uh, an inappropriate manner. We have a pediatrics medical assistant here who's accessing the records of an adult surgery patient. Probably something that, that shouldn't be occurring uh, within our organization. And so the next step for our customers at Fair Warning when we do find something inevitably that is inappropriate, it is to really get more information about that staff member. And so you know, I know many of the organizations on the call today uh, are likely very large organizations with hundreds or thousands of employees, and it may be difficult to find exactly uh, who a user is and what the background on that particular user or staff member is. So with fair warning, what we can do is we can click on the name of any individual within the application and we can pull back what we call a people card. And this people card gives us all the information about a user across our organization. We can see uh, where they work, their position, uh, different demographic information about them. We can also see a history of the user within fair warning. So for this particular individual, uh, Jennifer here, we can see that, well, she's been involved in seven different alerts in the past. She's been investigated multiple times. She has confirmed incidents on her record already. And therefore, fair warning has, has pretty obviously here in this case, 
deemed her a, a high risk individual for the organization. Now it looks like to me, uh, based on Jennifer's access to John here, that she has a pretty bad habit uh, of doing these types of inappropriate accesses. But if you don't have an application like Fair Warning, these accesses may slip through the cracks. Maybe these alerts occur over a, a long period of time. Maybe it's an eight, nine, 10 month period of time that she performs these inappropriate accesses. And so with Fair Warning, we're ensuring that no employees slip through the cracks when it comes to this type of behavior. Now I can also see here my people card, what systems are being accessed by Jennifer. I can see what activity Jennifer is performing within those different systems. And then lastly, I can see a snapshot uh, of the different alerts that are uh, occurring on Jennifer's particular uh, behaviors here. Now from here, we're gonna shift gears a little bit again and jump into our, uh, what we call our report center. And the report center is a great place to come in fair warning and either build reports across your data uh, or utilize our robust report library. And this report library uh, is a, really a compilation of all the most common reports that our customers are getting value from. And we break them out into different categories. So you can see that we have uh, reports for activity monitoring. We have reports that are powered by artificial intelligence. You can see reports that map to different audit controls in your area. Cloud reports or reports that go across Box or Office 365. We have COVID monitoring reports. That's obviously a, a category that's very important uh, to our customers in today's day and age. But we'll click into all reports here briefly. And what you can see is that we have, again, pre-built reports and analytics that are ready to go right out of the box. So no building necessary, no configuration necessary. If I wanna monitor for access after hours or anomalous workflows, maybe I wanna monitor for uh, coworker snooping, deceased patient access, whatever it is that I'd like to monitor for, this is ready to go right at your fingertips without you having to come in and uh, kind of use an advanced report builder. Everything's ready to go um, right out of the box. Now, you're probably wondering, well, when I enable these analytics to run, what happens? And what Fair Warning actually does is we send you proactive alerts based on the behaviors that you've selected that you'd like to monitor for. So in my alert dashboard, I can see different alerts that are triggering for different types of behavior. So I have some uh, coworker snooping, I have access to certain types of medications, I have someone who snooped on their neighbor. But what we're gonna do for today is I'll click into an example of an alert for uh, an anomalous type of workflow. And so Fair Warning has the ability to trend user behaviors against the behaviors of their peer groups. And so for our particular user in question here, uh, his name is Darren Arison. And we can see that Darren, uh, based on our graph, um, is actually deviating from his peer group with regards to printing of certain types of medical records. So obviously printing or actions like exporting uh, are definitely actions that we wanna pay close attention to when we talk about maybe data exfiltration or users who are um, exporting uh, or taking data out of the, uh, of the organization in an unusually high volume. And so for Darren here, we can see that his access is represented by our kind of yellow or gold line here we can see that Darren's peer group is represented by our green dashed line. And then on the day in question, the day that we're being alerted to, we can see that Darren crosses over uh, his peer group norm and he crosses over this red line, which is essentially our threshold for suspicion. 
Now, when we do find somebody who's performing inappropriate actions on a proactive basis, like we did here today for Darren, the next step within fair warning is, is to document that access. We wanna make sure that we document the inappropriate access uh, in order to have everything contained in fair warning in one location. And so what we'll do is with, with one click of a button, we'll convert our actual alert into a fully documented investigation. That way, from a compliance perspective, you have everything right at your fingertips, documented, ready to go. Maybe you need to talk with the staff member. Maybe you need to show this to an auditor. Uh, you need to show this to human resources, whatever it may be. Everything is contained right in one location. So fair warning is gonna give you a description. We can fill out a risk assessment form if you'd like. We can toggle whether or not this is reportable. We'll give you the details of the incident. We'll customize fields for your organization specifically. We'll log important dates. And then we also give you communication tools. So you can communicate with different members of the organization right here uh, within your notes section. And then we also have other sections built right into this investigation. So we have a form section where we can fill out forms that are specific to your organization right in the fair warning application. We'll document involved parties. We'll attach reports and events. And we can even attach documents that are specific uh, to maybe your organization. Maybe this is uh, HR sanctioning forms or uh, risk forms, breach forms, whatever it may be. These documents can be uploaded uh, even email chains right in the fair warning application. And then lastly, we have our resolution. So this is where we come into the fair warning application and we essentially close the loop from everything that we've talked about today. Uh, we've talked about uh, proactive reporting, reactive reporting, um, but really documenting at the end of the day uh, what occurred within the incident, whether we're closing this with incident or without incident, showing our due diligence, documenting things like corrective actions on staff members and response actions. It's an extremely important part of the fair warning program. And again, our resolution section kind of closes that loop uh, within the application. So that really covers kind of a high level tour uh, of the fair warning application. I wanna make sure that we leave time here for, uh, for any questions that may come up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause sharing uh, of my screen uh, and then from here, uh, Chris, I don't know if we want to hand it back to you to see if we've got any questions that have come in. Yeah, thanks, Tal. I'll take, I'll take it back. Thank you. Um, we've had one question uh, which is related to the, um, uh, the statements around data breaches, um, the 60%. Um, and. Um, I think what we'll do with that question is we will obviously after this um, webinar I'll be sharing the deck. We'll also share all the references where where those kind of statements came from, so you can um, you can have a look in uh, yourself in terms of researching that. And obviously anything beyond that, then we're happy to take take that on. But if there's any further questions, um, if anybody wants to pop them into the questions box while we've got time, um, got a bit of time left now. Otherwise, we can. Um, um, I think we're kind of done in terms of our presentations, gents, aren't we? Yep, absolutely. So we can we can pause here for a moment and, and give just a minute or two for any questions. Yeah. But um, like we mentioned earlier, um, you have our uh, contact information for ourselves and for IT Health. And if you'd like to get something that's really customized to your organization uh, from a demonstration perspective, again, always happy to perform those kind of custom demos to, to your specific threats and your specific use cases. So want to make sure that I throw that out there uh, as well. Yeah, I no, appreciate that, yeah. Uh, and, um, and Tyler, if, if you could, you just share share the presentation deck again, that, that just has the follow-up contact information should should anybody want to, to reach out and, and um, set up a conversation uh, directly with the, the, the folks at IT Health and, and obviously um, ourselves as well. 
Yeah, we've um, the session has been recorded, so what we'll we'll follow our normal format for everybody is after this um, after today we'll we'll email everybody with the link to the the recording, and obviously that might prompt any further questions that people have got. Um, so you know, please feel free to get in contact with us that way. Um, if you don't want to wait for emails to come through, then obviously you you've got contact details from the invites as well. Um, as you um, as you leave. The, the webinar, there's a, there's a small survey which is really helpful. It's just some feedback for us to kind of try help us improve our, our delivery of these presentations to you all. But um, I'd just like to say thank you for everybody for joining today and, and listening and staying attentive. And thank you to colleagues uh, Tyler and Andy for, uh, for their input as well. And um, so if you've got any questions, please come back to us. But thanks very much and we'll see you all soon. Thanks now. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.